and it's time for day four of 12. I started counting in my head and then got confused and lost my train of thought. That's why you don't try to think and talk about different things at the same time, doesn't work. And it's time for day four of 12 days of anime. If you missed any of my previous three days, you can find links in the description down below for those, as well as video annotations happening somewhere up in here. Also in the description down below, you can find a link to the 2013 list of all the participants, participants who are participating in 12 days of anime. So there's a whole bunch of pretty otter faces. I think there's like 120 plus. That's a lot, that's a lot of people. Um, so go ahead and click on that link so you can be taken to all of their videos and check those out because they're all fantastic and great. For day four, I'm going to be talking about Madoka Magica Rebellion, which is the third numbers, the third movie in the Madoka Magica trilogy. The first two came out in 2012 and this one just recently came out in the past month. I saw it at the beginning of December, so I saw it like oh two weeks ago, a week and a half ago. Um, so obviously... It hasn't been released, it hasn't been widely distributed yet. If you have seen it, feel free to stay. If you have not seen it, please, 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 if you plan on seeing it, don't, I don't wanna be rotten bacon butt, especially for something as epic and amazing as this movie is. That is as, that is as spoiler free as it's gonna get. The movie is wonderful, it's fantastic, and I do not wanna ruin a single bit of it for you. So that's my spoiler warning, spoiler warning. If you saw my 12 Days of Anime last year, then you know that Madoka Magica was one of my top 12 favorite moments of 2012, and I still regard it as one of the most intelligent and best written anime ever. Like, not just the recent decade, it is one of the best written anime in all of animes. I really feel that Madoka Magica was the series that put Urobuchi on the map in terms of a writer, and I feel that, at least for me, every series he's done since then, from Fate Zero to Psychopaths to Suisse no Gargantia, that one a little bit less so, so it's only been like three series, but um, all three of those I thought were superb and incredibly well done. The guy just knows how to write a dark, thought-provoking, incredibly layered series, and I just love it. I think he is a fantastic writer, even if every single series he does manages to rip my heart into tiny little pieces every freaking gosh she got on the golden jeep gosh darn time. And the trilogy of Madoka movies is absolutely no exception, especially this third one. Rebellion is, from beginning to end, a prime example of why Udobuchi is not just a writer, but also a craftsman with themes, with characters, with dialogue and his understanding of human emotions and how that affects our decisions is just really good. He has a huge handle on understanding those. So the first two films were a retelling slash condensing of the anime, but this film is a completely different and new story. It, like, it's set immediately after the second, not immediately, it's set after the second film, but it is original material, which I thought was an incredibly brave endeavor for Urobuchi to do because Madoka has an incredibly intense and loyal following who would probably, prob I'm just gonna wager a guess, would probably not enjoy their favorite anime going all poopy. And it's not just like he changed minor little itty bitty things here and there, he actually created an ending that he knew was gonna divide audiences. Like he was completely aware that the vast majority of people could potentially hate, hate, hate the ending he created. And he decided to do it anyway because that's how he wanted to tell the story. Personally, I really liked the ending. It took me a while to come to the conclusion that I liked it, but I think it is an ending that you're supposed to walk away from the movie not knowing how you feel about it because you're supposed to think about it. But the whole spin of having Homura become Lucifer so that she could save Madoka from having to be lonely and in pain, and then the idea that Madoka wants to save Homura because she doesn't want her living in hell, so there's just this cycle of heaven and hell that is constantly going on and you don't know when it's gonna end is just incredibly interesting. It's an incredibly interesting concept and there's so much, there's so much up for interpretation which leads to awesome discussion. Also, that last shot of Kyube all sorts of messed up, I would, I want that just on my Tumblr all the time, all the time I want that on my Tumblr and all over. I want it framed. 
Now that'd be, that'd be weird. <laughs> and the last thing I want to talk about is the art design, which was just as amazeballs as the original series, if not more so. I don't think I will ever not be blown away by the creativity of the designs of the witches, or in this case, the nightmares. They're just so creative and breathtaking and unique that I'm actually kind of envious of the imagination one must have to come up with those designs, and actually even just the world entirely. It just has to take such a creative mind to do that, and I just appreciate it. It's like, it's an anime that has such a different style that I don't, I don't remember another one that has a style like that. And it's the stuff that I could only dream. I can only dream about it. I can never actually do it. I could dream about dreaming about it. It's just so amazing and pleasing to the eye. So that's it for day four of 12 days of anime. I have so much more I could talk about this movie, but um, I'll just have to make a review about it sometime. Because it really is two thumbs up. You know, if I had four thumbs, I would give four thumbs. I give two guns. There you go, two guns done. <laughs> I will see you guys tomorrow for day five. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye!